thank you for a very interesting presentation. Now I will tell you a little bit about what we are doing in Aarhus. In the end of 2014, we will have this incredible building. But what are we going to put in it? Because actually, if everything is digital, what are we going to do then? Um, this new library, Doc One, is a part of the hugest building um, project in Aarhus, ever. It's called Urban Media Space. And it consists of Doc One, which is the library, the citizen service, a lot of space for network and partners. It consists of automatic parking areas, two new harbor squares, etc. It's a huge new city center in Aarhus. We have a vision at Doc One. We want to be a space for cooperation. We want to be a place for dialogue, for knowledge for inspiration and ideas. And we want to be an open, informal learning um, space. And we also want to be a unique place for children and families. So, how are we going to do that? We're working on it. Uh, we haven't got the exact answer yet, but we are working on it. We will try to go from seeing the library as a space for media to seeing the library space as a media. We will try to focus on the on-site instead of the online. We will, instead of information, focus on meaning. We will focus on not meeting information, but meeting people. We will not see our library users as visitors, but as resource persons. And we'll go from having everything structured and arranged to see what's happening. In Denmark, we have a new um, library model created by the Danish School of, of Information Science. It consists of four spaces. The inspiration space, the learning space, the, perform the, the performative space, and the meeting space. And this is not to understand that, well, wow, when I go here, I go to the information space. When I go here, I go to the performative space. You have to see it metaphorically. That you, we need all the time to, to take into consideration to have these four points in our library buildings. This means that we all the time have to think about the possibility for our users and our partners to discover, to experience, to create, and to participate. We have to find a balance between engagement and experience, between innovation and empowerment. One of the ways that we do that is by using user-driven innovation and co-creation. We have done that for several years now. We engage our users in everything we do concerning our new building, but also in our daily, uh, everyday life. And what's the purpose? What's the purpose in always asking and using the users as resource persons. We actually get to develop our organization and our staff all the time because this, the users are always questioning what we're doing. Why are you doing like this? Why couldn't you just do like this? Or this is a bad idea. Why don't you just do something else? So we always have to be on, focus on what our users are saying because then we try, we have we believe that we can make something more relevant for our users. It also gives us an opportunity to involve our citizens in the development of Doc One and giving, getting them to be familiar with Doc One and this new city center. We have the possibility to make informal learning um, processes. Uh, we have the opportunity to make democratic processes. And we have the possibility to make uh, relevant services. However, we also work with collaborative innovation seen here as partnerships. We know for a fact that when we come to DOC1, we, we haven't got the staff, we haven't got the money or any other kind of resources to fill in this entire building ourselves. We need partners to be able 
in order to make a, a living, interesting library service. So we need our partners. We work with partnerships on a strategic level and on an everyday basis. Uh, we try to create our organization in order to make it more uh, suitable for doing partnerships all around. And we do this because we think it's an opportunity to experience and uncover new opportunities. It's a way to create better contacts with the local community, with the strategic and the political um, uh, levels. It's a way to gain new competences. Boy, can you learn a lot if you talk to people who know something completely different from you. And it's a way of trying to make new services without always having to find out how to do it yourself. I'll give you some of the examples. Uh, this is examples from our development work. We do a lot of development projects and we prototype a lot. We take things, we, we create them and then we close them down and we take the best of the experiences and put them into our, our er everyday library. So a lot of the things that we build, we uh, finish it up again. And that's a part of the way we work. People's Lab is a two-year project where we are trying to find out if there's things from the maker, um, from the maker movement that we can use in the library. Uh, we are trying to see if we can find a way to uh, support the people, the citizens, the users wish and aim for innovating and creating. It's a two-year project. We have a lot of partners. We have a lot of user-driven innovation, and we don't do anything on our own, because then it wouldn't be relevant for us. When we work in People's Lab, we are trying to collect knowledge about how libraries can work with makerspaces. We are, in two years, creating six prototypes, three in Aarhus, three in Roskilde. And we will try to answer the questions how the library can, can create a room for encouraging uh, the people's, the users wish to innovate and create. How the uh, libraries can create meetings between different knowledge areas. And how we can make something with power and energy in the local community. The maker movement, I think what they are thinking in the maker movement is very relevant and very interesting for the libraries. Uh, some of their statements is, uh, if it's broken, fix it. That means you have to be able to know how to fix it. Create together. You have to be interested in doing things together and you have to have the social ability actually to doing things together with others. You have to be curious. You have to find knowledge for yourself. For yourself. If it's not broken, improve it. You need to have the wish, the wish and the um, interest in taking over, taking control and making things yourselves. Share knowledge, share tools, share premises. You need to want to share. And the last but not least, make us, that's always to do with do it yourself. I think when it comes to libraries, is do it together. DIT is the most important thing for the libraries. Okay, how do we work with this? First, we had to build a community. Because if we want to do something with our local community, we actually need to know our community. And not just know, well, I know Aarhus, I know how many inhabitants, I know uh, which kind of schools, etc. I need people, active people, who want to partake in creating this place for me. Because I can't do it on my own. If I have some users who really want to be a part of it, then they can make other users interested. So I need to find the people who want to be a part of building these things for me, with me, together with me. The first prototype we made was Tech Lab uh, in Aarhus. It was uh, a hackerspace. We created a hackerspace for a month in the library, we had a local hackerspace, open space, Aarhus, uh, move in to the library. 
with all their tools and their old computers and all their stuff. And uh, they were there for a month. And we had so many people coming there. Small ones, old ones, everybody. Uh, the homeless guy, David, he, from day one, he just was there all the time. The, the students came and uh, wanted to, to uh, draw on the border, etc. Everybody came. Um, so what did we learn from this hackerspace? We learned that it was, well, it was a huge, huge success. It was in February. I miss it every single day. Now I miss my tech lab. Why? Because I found out that the love for technology, that is really a good thing to do at the library. To show that technology is a good thing. To make people understand what's behind the screen. To have school classes trying to destroy computers, to make jewelry out of computer parts, and just then you can know what, what's behind the screen. We could see that giving access to various equipment was a good thing. We could see that people used the library in another way, that they met up in another way. We could see people discussing, discussing, discussing theories, things that they would maybe discuss at their, uh, uh, when they were uh, in their education hall, but they did it at the library. But we also found out that it really needs a maker. A maker in residence. A maker who's not only in love with making, with technology, but a maker who's in love with talking to people, every people, to being the ambassador for technology, for the library, for making. In Tech Lab, we made an everyday life. You can come, you can use what you want, you can be here for two minutes or the entire day. We made events. Uh, you can come and make a robot out of toothbrushes, or you can come and hear lectures, or you can come and do various things. We gave an opportunity to create together and experiencing together. Second prototype, or the first prototype in Roskilde, that was a guitar lab. Um, they have some staff members in Roskilde who just loves guitars. So they found out that they would create guitar labs where they could repair guitars. Uh, so I think they had it for two days, separate days. People can come, have, bring their guitar, and they can have a discussion about the gu guitar. They can um, repair the guitar together, they can play, and they can exchange knowledge about their guitars. Why is this interesting for the library? It's interesting because the city of Roskilde has a vision. It wants to be a musical city. And when doing this guitar lab, the libraries in Roskilde actually support the vision of the city. It's interesting because it's the bringing the library's collection alive. It's what's behind the collection. It's behind the music that you actually have at the library. It makes people work together, exchange. And it actually makes the staff's private interests and skills come alive. Then I'll take another example, Demotek Aarhus. Demotek, you know that in Sweden? Um, we, we are trying to do it with a twist. Uh, we call it our um, underground library. The twist is that we focus more on the creation, the process of doing the art, and not so much on, on lending out. But it is a way to mix artistic expressions. We give re room for upcoming artists to have workshops where they interact and create their artistic things together. We give them room to rehearse their performances, for instance, uh, stand-up poetry. We, we give them a mic in the middle of the library, and they stand there, and they have their crowd, uh, so that they can exchange ideas and say, hey, maybe you should do this in another way. 
Uh, and of course we also give the exhibition part and the lending out part, but it's primarily the process that's in focus for us. Quite often I hear, okay, but where are the books? So, ladies and gentlemen, I will give you an example of the book. Mindspot, our youth uh, service, created, it's quite some years ago now, in 2009, created a book called Impression Young People in Aarhus. Ten young people voluntarily created a book for us. They were told, make a book about young people in Aarhus, and that was all. They had a time schedule, you have six months, they had an amount of money, and that was it. Ten people worked together, young people worked together on this entire project, uh, and they actually created a book and school materials, etc., an exhibition in six months, and they worked, I'm sorry to say so, their asses off. They made the graphics, they found the, the, the persons they wanted to portray, they took the photos, they made the whole project managing, they, they created the whole thing for themselves, and they learned so much from it. But what does it tell us in the library? We made a process where we gave the young people the opportunity to create for, with the other young people, and together. We handed over the library. These young people lived at the library for several weekends where we had no staff there. I've seen photos. It looked so messy Sunday evening, but Monday morning it looks totally as with what, how we had left it the day before. We gave over responsibility. I actually didn't know when I said, okay, you have an amount of money, you have six months, give me a book. We didn't know at all if it was going to succeed, but it did. And it gave these young people a lot of responsibility. And it made a lot of very, very interesting uh, learning processes for the, uh, for the young people. Let me just sum up what I think a mega library is. A mega library is, for me to see it, co-creation between users, partners and the library. It's a fo focus on community building. It's creating meetings between different knowledge areas and bringing knowledge and sharing alive. It's a transformation from connection, from collection to connection. It's facilitating innovation processes. And it's the, cre it's the possibility for citizens to create together, to meet up, to bring, to, to, to get knowledge together. And then when it said hackerspace, I want to say, yes, we do have a 3D printer. Yes, I love my 3D printer. But it's not all to do with 3D, uh, 3D printers or laser cutters. It's an attitude. It's a way of working. And I think that's very important. Thank you.